Well, we continue our Q's Connection series. Brian Higgins here in Syracuse. Pleased to be joined by the star player of the women's lacrosse team, Emily Harris, Chuck. And uh, that's an ongoing statement now, Emily, as uh, you'll be coming back next year for another go at your senior year. So uh, congrats on that decision being made. But uh, first off, how are you and uh, your family? I presume back home in the uh, Rochester area at the moment. Thank you. And thank you for having me on. Um, it's been it's been crazy the last few months, but it has been nice being home, even with all the craziness going on outside, just to you know, take a step back and settle in. It's strange here because from where I are to I am to where you are right now is what hour, fifteen minutes, hour and a half if you're you're taking yeah. your time. But at the moment, there's basically no scenario which either of us would do that. that that's got to be kind of weird for you, as close as you are to campus right now, where that's just not part of your life at the moment. It is. It's weird, and it, it stinks. It stinks not being able to jump in my truck every day and drive that hour and 15 minutes down the road. We're so close, but mm -hmm. it, it absolutely stinks not being able to drive in every day and see everyone on campus. Let's sort of take this in, in reverse. We'll, we'll get back to how this all started now more than a month ago, I guess close to six weeks ago at this, at this point, seven weeks maybe. But what, it was three or four weeks into the thing where the word starts coming down that there may be a chance for people in your scenario of senior year athletically cut off early to have another chance at it. When do you remember first hearing that might be an idea? And I guess how fast did that process happen for you? Well, I think it goes back to the day the announcement was initially made when when we were in Virginia that Thursday, talking with the coaching staff, just asking those questions like, is it a possibility to even come back? Is it possible to you know, if the NCAA didn't come out and make the statement that they did, was there anything that I could do on my end to try to get another year back? So right from the start, it was something that was automatically in, in the back of my head. Um, but luckily, the announcement came out pretty, pretty soon. If anything, it might have been a little bit too early the next day, having them come out and say that they were going to grant another year of eligibility. But even after that announcement, there was still a lot of uncertainty um, for the following couple weeks and thankfully they did come out again on I want to say it was the 30th and make that final announcement leaving it up to the schools and and luckily we have an Austin University that was able to come through with that so it it was crazy last few weeks a lot of uncertainty but I'm so glad everything worked out and you're right from the second the NCAA said what they said that just kind of kick-started a very long process, uh, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think the first part of that process is you had to make a decision of if you even wanted to come back or, or not. Was that, was that an easy yes uh, for you or, or what went into your mind when uh, deciding if you wanted to, to try out this senior year? Again? I think it was definitely 100% an, an easy yes. Um, but at the same time, there was a lot of still you know, working ongoing parts that had to be taken care of. But mm -hmm. without a doubt, I knew that if I had the opportunity to come back again, I would do absolutely anything that I could to, to come back and finish what what I started with the team. Um, so being able to come back, get the get another year and, and get back on the field with my teammates just makes me so excited. I, obviously, I think maybe one of the, the tougher parts to work your way through is not the athletic side. Yeah, you want to come back and play uh, lacrosse and uh, other people want to come back and, and play their sport. I think that's maybe the easy part of the decision to make. But the school side of things, especially for a senior like you, is complicated. I talked to Drake Porter, I think it might have been three weeks ago now, and he made the same decision as you did to come back uh, for a senior year. But he was still trying to figure out what grad program to do. What, where are you at in, in that process of, you know, finding – uh, what you're going to do and applying for the grad school or had that been something you had begun already? I I was in the same boat as Drake for sure. Um, after graduation I was hoping to go into the coaching portal and, and get a coaching job so I wasn't planning on going back to school for another year. Mm -hmm. um, as of right now I'm looking into the um, one of the certificate, certificate programs in, in going with that, but it was something where I wasn't thinking about it at all before any of this. Uh, luckily, Syracuse does offer something that I think would, would fit um, fit into um, what I could use being a coach, mm -hmm. um, but it, it was crazy thinking about applying to school again and, and going through that process. That's, uh, I think, a similar thing that uh, actually, speaking of Drake, that he said he was going to do too, is try to get coaching certified and, and stuff like that. It's got to be something, too, where you're a senior. Like, you had been thinking about, yeah, you want this season was big, and but you knew there was a, a period on that. There was an end point at the end of May one way or another. 
where you kind of had to readjust and you just the big picture life plan. So for when and where this stuff would take place for. You. Yeah. Um, it, the entire season, it was obviously being a senior, it's a different one. It's knowing that there is a, a an end point. It's knowing that there is a, a certain amount of games left until you're done and you can't put that Jersey on again. So um, I think going into next year, I think it would, you know, definitely help a lot knowing that I've, felt similar feelings knowing that next year will be the end point mm -hmm. um but um I, I took this year step by step and knowing that i was just going to take it day by day and game by game and have the most fun with it and when that time did come hopefully hopefully it was uh end of may after we won the national championship everything would be good and all would be happy and you were having a huge year i mean that goes without saying i mean you were up there nationally and goals and points and any stat you might want. You guys have been having a, a great season, just uh, one loss in the opening month of the year. When when the news came down, you mentioned it, you were in Virginia getting ready to play uh, a big ACC game literally that day. You had, you had a Thursday game on the schedule and everything basically got wiped out. What was the emotion in the locker room with the team at, at the hotel at that point, trying to process, I, I guess, what had just happened when you're thinking – the real world side of things and everything that's going on. And at the other side, your season just vanished right in front of your face at that point. It was a crazy day. There was a lot of emotions. We actually woke up first thing in the morning. We had an early walkthrough and we went through the walkthrough as if we were going to play later that, that day. Mm -hmm. uh, we got back to the hotel and we did hear some chatter about the potential of the ACC doing exactly what the Ivies had just done the day before. Um, so all the seniors in fifth year, fifth years, we hung out in the lobby the, the rest of the day until we did get that, that final news, just, you know, hanging out together, thinking about all of the what ifs and if this happens, we're, you know, still going to stick together. Um, but it was later on in the, in the afternoon, it was actually right when we were supposed to eat our pregame meal. Mm -hmm. Did we go into the, the meeting room and we did get the news that the ACC had suspended there the rest of the season. So in that lot or in the in the lobby of the hotel as everyone waited to go in and then in the actual meeting room it was emotions that I hope I never have to feel again with my team that was a lot of a lot of tears a lot of head shaking and and nerves um but very quickly on the bus ride home the next day everything did change when the NCAA made that announcement so it was it was a crazy roller coaster of emotions over that 48 hour period not that it makes it better or whatever, but would it have been different or did it help at least a little maybe that you had the day? So at least it wasn't Gary Gate walks into a room and tells you something you had no idea. Did, did that allow the processing to, to happen a little? I don't know if easier is the right word, but maybe slightly less shocking of what was happening that you guys at least knew uh, the possibility was out there that day? Definitely. I think it did help with the shock level. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, even though we weren't home in Syracuse, um, and we were in a hotel in Virginia, it was nice just to, to sit with everyone and, and, you know, be all there together and, and get the news together as opposed to maybe if we were back in Syracuse, then everyone would, you know, be scattered. Um, so it happened, um, but it, it's nice to move on from it. That was only a week and a half after two, what I thought would be the craziest thing about your schedule and games that year, the whole Maryland craziness that happened where I, I know I spent a lot of time yelling on the radio about all that. It stood out to me about you and your team, and I think that kind of plays into this a little bit. You guys, with that Maryland game and having to go down there on short notice, you showed how much you were willing to do anything to go play a game. So I guess you kind of already knew that about your team, that you were willing to do anything to play a game and to have that taken away from you. Yes, and that's what made this team this year so special. Um, our mantra from the beginning was all aboard. Um, it was pretty cool to actually think we're all aboard a ship as we travel across the country, seeing that we were supposed to play a lot of away games this season. Mm -hmm. But it, without a doubt, is exactly what the team represented. Um, everyone was was playing for each other. And on the field, with the exception of our second game, it really showed. And then, you know, when it came down to it, when we did get some tough news at, at the end in Virginia, we were all there together, still on board the ship. And it was awesome. And you said it, this this season, I mean, this season turned out crazy for everybody, but had it gone on as planned, your season was going to be extremely unique 
and unusual anyway. I mean, you must have gone into this year with a, a very different mindset, right? Knowing that with the dome renovations, you guys would be gone. And legitimately, you were planning on being on the road pretty much every week from where you were in Virginia for the entire rest of the season. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was a lot to, to think about initially. But um, the entire senior class in the fifth years who knew that we, we only had – six or seven or eight games left in the dome and it was going to be cut off right then in, in the end of February. We we had fun with it every game that we had in there and we knew that we were going to have so much fun with traveling and being on the road for the rest of the season and taking something that some teams may not think is the best thing that could happen to the team as in, into something that you know we were going to explode with success with. Just watching you guys and I think this is the case with your team a lot of years but I definitely noticed it this year, even more so than normal. And you said it, how tight you guys are as a group and how much that kind of drove you. How close are you guys now still? I mean, obviously nobody's seeing each other in person, but what, what are the texts, the, the chats, the Zooms? Uh, what do you have going as a team right now that we're almost uh, two months after uh, that time where you found out what was going on at Virginia? We still have our player group chat that has to go off multiple times every day. So it's awesome to stay connected like that. But as far as, you know, one team setting with the coaches, we do have weekly Zoom calls, which is nice to see everyone's faces and, and hear what they're all doing. But we're, we're so close and we're all best friends and sisters. So it's not like something like this could end all communication with us. If anything, it's brought us closer in, in talking to people who maybe we didn't talk to all the time mm -hmm. when we were on campus and just, you know, the feeling of not being together is bringing us closer together now. All right, Emily, I got to ask you, how are you spending your days here? There's not a ton going on. Classes are, are wrapping up here, but uh, what are you doing most of the day right, right now? No, not too much. I'm trying to keep busy as much as I can. Um, luckily, I do have a gym downstairs or a makeshift gym, so that's definitely keeping me busy. I pulled out my, my old backstop from about eight years ago that I used to <laughs> shoot on now that the school's all shut down. Uh, so that's out in my front yard. So even though there's not much going on on the outside, there's still stuff to keep me busy here. I have three other siblings that definitely keep me busy. Um, it's been fun. All right. So you at least have somebody to, to do something with, right? That, that's got to be helpful. Yes, definitely. All right. Uh, streaming anything right now? Netflix? Well, what's in the queue that we should be watching? I jumped on that Outer Banks bandwagon. Mm -hmm. uh, my buddy Asa, she's really pushing for me to watch that. I tried it a few times, but definitely not Tiger King. I don't think I want to get into that. No? No Tiger King? I don't know. Tiger, it looks like a little bit too much. Have you, have you watched any of it yet, though? I haven't, and I right. probably should before I say that. But. I'll say just, Emily, give it, give it like legitimately five or ten minutes, and you'll know. You'll know I if you – Crazy. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Like if you go five minutes in and don't like it, you won't like the rest of it. But if you're hooked, you'll be good. But that's the good thing. You'll know about five minutes in whether you want to ditch it or not. So then you'll at least know what's going on. So that that's uh, I think that's the suggestion from there. Uh, just lastly, you know, you mentioned your home with your siblings, uh, your family. How y'all doing health wise and stir crazy wise and all that? How's everything out in Rochester? It, it sounds like what I'm hearing. It's probably about uh, the same as things are here right now. We are all healthy. Um, it's not too bad compared to other, you know, parts of New York and in, in Syracuse, it's very similar. Um, but it's crazy. But so we are all healthy. We're all happy and we still love each other. But at the same time, we are going a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say that is the uh, common story of uh, most houses anywhere around here right now. All right, Emily, uh, great that uh, – everything's working out as best as it can be for you in this uh, crazy time and that uh, whatever it may be, we'll be seeing you back on uh, campus in Syracuse and looking forward to that. Thank you so much.